from the greatest book in the world, God's book, the Bible. And if you don't have a Bible open by it now, shame on you. The church is the pill and grind of the truth. We speak where the Bible speak and we are solid where the Bible is solid. We don't be adding nothing to his word and we don't be taking nothing from his word. The Central Crown Bible School of Preaching lectureship, one of the greatest lectureships I think in the world. I don't think no lectureship compared to it. That's my thought. That's not everybody's thought. That's my thought. And I think the greatest preachers come from the Central Carolina School of Preaching, and that's my thought. That's not everybody's thought. That's my thought. And I want to invite some of us down to y'all lectureships. We ready to roll. All you got to do is invite us down, and we'll come on down and show, us, show you why we feel that way. The Bible's a great book. It's a book of truth. It's a book that nobody should add nothing to it, and nobody should take nothing from it. It's a perfect book. It don't need fixing up. All it needs is preaching. And my topic happened to be this morning, the authority in the home. The authority in the home. When I got my topic, I sit down at home and started laughing because that's a great topic. I just hope I do the topic right. You know, preachers get up to preach all the time and go to Ramblin and never deal with their topic. I promise you, I'm going to deal with my topic. Because <laughs> I got something I want to say about this topic. Is that all right? I thought in the home, there are some Old Testament facts about the husband. When I look at the thought in the home, I always look at the husband, how how God formed man from the dust of the earth and brought his nostrils the breath of life. And then he made the woman from the man. And then you had Adam and Eve, and they got together and they made some children. And I believe their first two children was Cain and Abel. And you know one of them killed up. So it wasn't a perfect home, but it was God's home. It was the first family. Turn your Bibles, if you don't mind, to the book of Genesis. We can stop reading that verse 7. Turn your Bibles, if you don't mind, to the book of Genesis. We can stop reading that verse 7. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and verse 7, the Bible says, The Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Man being alone, it was not good in Genesis 2 and verse 18. In Genesis 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. So it wasn't good for man to be alone. Ain't that something to think about? None of the lower creation was suitable for man. None of the animals was suitable for man, and there wasn't nothing but one man on earth. So God saw fit to put out in the sleep and took the rib from his side and made a woman. And by the way, that was the first operation ever was on the earth. I heard y'all just graduated a doctor from over here. But God was the first one to ever perform an operation. When you see those doctors putting people to sleep, they ain't got it from their books, they got it from God. It was God who put man to sleep and, and, and took the real from his side and, and made a woman. All intelligence, all brilliance, all thoughts come from God. And without God's thoughts, man won't be able to do nothing. They had to go back and look at the Bible and realize that they had to put a man to sleep in order to take a real for him. Because it probably been so much pain and God knew that. So he put Adam to sleep and he performed the first operation, and he made a woman. Ain't that something? Took a reel from Adam's side and made a woman. And I want y'all to understand something while we're here. God didn't make man a man. Ain't that something? God made man a woman. We're in a society now where men are marrying men, and women are marrying women. And that's sin. I often tell people anything that's not of God is sin. Sin is the transgression of God's law. When you go about to establish your own righteousness. 
God would never be pleased with a man making a man or uh, marrying a man or a woman marrying a woman. The Catholic Church is accepting that doctrine. But Lonesdale, the Church of Christ on earth, we have never accept that doctrine. That doctrine is of the devil. And when you see a man marrying a man, that's of the devil. When you see a woman marrying a woman, that's of the devil. And that's why we got to teach the old law and the new law to our children, to teach them where they come from. Because our ancestors was Adam and Eve, and wasn't nothing but two God made in the beginning. And, 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 and all living, all people on earth come from these two people, Adam and Eve. That's something to think about, ain't it? Yeah. Whether you're rich or poor, whether you're black or white, whether you're Haitian or German or, or in Germany or anywhere else on earth, we all come from one blood, and that's Adam and Eve. And in the home, God gave the man the authority, as you can see as we continue to go through this lesson. Look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 20, if you don't mind. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 20. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowls of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helpmate. Ain't that something? There was not found a helpmate for Adam. Something for us to think about, ain't it? And look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 23. And Adam said, this is not, and Adam said, this is not bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She should be called a woman because she was taken out of man. Mm. So think about it. How Adam used those words to describe the first woman. And Adam said, she should be called a woman because she was taken out of a man. Ain't that something to think about? I want y'all to understand something. The woman have always been of the man. Look at 1 Corinthians 11 and verse number 8. Let's go over here. 1 Corinthians 11, if you don't mind. Chapter 11. I feel like I'm doing Bible study this morning. Mm. And verse number 8. For the man is not of the what? Woman. But the woman of the what? Man. Ain't that what the Bible says? Man. A lot of times we in a society where this women living stuff is moving in on the church. Well, a woman in, even in the church today want to do the things that God told a man to do. A man in the church is so weak in his, he letting the women do it. Brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, the Bible's right. And it's going to always be right, and it'll never change. Not long as we got a Bible. The other thing I want to say, the husband and the wife were joined in together by God. Look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8. Genesis chapter 2. Excuse me, not 8, 18. Please stop reading that verse 18 if you don't mind. Notice what the Bible says. And the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto the islands to see what he will call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowls of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helpmate for him. And Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God take from the man, he a woman and brought her unto the what? Man. Ain't that something to think about? Notice verse 23. And Adam said, this is not bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She should be called a woman because she was taken out of the man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh and they was both naked and the man and his wife and they was not ashamed. And this was a marriage that God put together, male and female. 
is honorable. The marriage bed is honorable and it's not defiled and it'll never be defiled. We shall raise up our children teaching them these books at home. Fathers should be teaching his children these books at home. Mothers should be teaching our daughters these books at home. And when, and when our children grow up and they go away and they go to college and different universities, they already have a seed planted in their head that if you get married, you marry a woman. If you get married, you marry a man. And when they get to these universities that got all this homosexuality going on around the world, your children will stand for something. And if they don't stand for something, they'll fall for anything. If you raise your children for 18 years and you talk to your children and get to know your children, you can debate your children. Because sometimes children have things build up in their mind that a mother and a father need to tear down at home. Not at the church building, at home. They need to teach their children. They need to talk to their children. They need to get to know their children. And let the children know that they are raised up in the way that they shall go. There was nothing wrong with the way you raised them up. The two became one flesh. Look at Matthew 19 and verse number 6, if you don't mind. The man and the woman became one flesh. Matthew 19, and verse number 6. Are we there? The Bible says, Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What well, therefore God has drawn together, let not the man put us what? I want you to read that with me again. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one what? Flesh. What well, therefore God has drawn together, let not man put us what? Um, when you go and look at that word, that man, and that's going to be a masculine gender word, whether you believe it or not. The man has always been the head of the home. And because the man was the head of the home, God was telling the man, look here, you got authority. Don't tell what I've drawn together. I've drawn together a husband and a wife. You know, when I came into the church and faith for me and was preaching this gospel to me before I got married to my wife, I had two things in my mind that I was going to find me a wife and that I was going to stay with her until one of us died. I had that made up in my mind because of the teachings of the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, marriage is worth fighting for. Marriage is worth holding on. Because it gets bad over the years. Me and my wife, July 11th, gone was 25 years for me and her. And it's been rough and tough over the years. And we had a lot of ups and downs in my marriage. But in my home, I had my mind made up that for better or worse, I was going to hold on to my wife. And we was going to work it out. So many people get divorces today. And they act like uh, changing their shoes. It doesn't mean nothing to them. God has put marriage together. God has joined that man and that woman. And God said, what I have joined together, let not man put us under. And in that home, the thought is always with the man, believe it or not. And before I finish the lesson, you will see that. When a marriage go wrong, if a man was a real man in that house and was standing up for what God said from day one, and when he was dating her, and if he know the Holy Scriptures, he would have known what's right. Now, marriage is honorable, you know, and the bed is not defiled. Whether you're in the church or out the church, marriage is honorable. But when you're a member of the Lord's church and know the scriptures about marriage, before you get married, it makes a big difference. You will take your time to get married. You will teach, when you're dating somebody, you will teach them what the Bible teaches about marriage. Because marriage is honorable and the bed, that's why God said, if a man can't rule his house, Neither can he rule the church. I'm going to say that again. And brothers, you need to have elders, you need to have this in here. Preachers, you need If a man can't rule his house, neither should he be ruling the church, telling other people what to do according to the scriptures. Not only should we teach the scriptures, but we should be example of what we are teaching. I'm the Bible say elders, be the husband of one wife, deacons, the husband of one wife, why? Because you are in authority in the congregations. And people looking to you for leaderships. 
They're looking at your home. They're looking at your family. They're looking at the way you raise your child. Let me tell you something. We are teach in more than by scripture. We teach also by example. By the way that we live, by the way we carry ourselves, by the way we treat our wives, by the way our wives treat us, by the way we raise our children, by the way we teach our children. Ain't that something? I remember when I was coming up, when we act up sometime, my mama or my daddy, all they used to have to do was look at me. And I know if I keep acting up when I get home, it was going to be some tail cutting up. You know, a home is an institution that the devil want to destroy. Because the devil know that God has put together the home. The devil know God put together marriage. And anything God put together, the devil want to destroy. So I'm telling you, before you get married, you think time and count up the cost before you marry somebody, dog. Before you marry somebody's son, you take time and count up the cost before you marry somebody's son. Because marriage is a serious institution that they put together by the God of heaven. There were many times I could have walked out on my wife or my wife could have walked out on me. But we stand for something. We know what the Bible teaches. And God teach me to dwell with my wife according to knowledge. I got to get to know her ways, her good points, her bad points, how she feel about things. She got to get to know my ways. And then I dwell with her corner. Just because a man in the head, he don't walk on his wife like we walk on this carpet. He dwell with her according to knowledge. They get to know each other. They grow together in the church. And they be both become converted by the renewing of their minds. That's marriage. Better or worse. That's the home. The man got the authority. What God wants us men to do is rise up and be men of God. Amen. And stand up for what's right. And teach our children to do this oh, terrible thing when you got a man and his wife acting unseemly. And she's so mad that she, she done got out of, out, of, out, of, out of her normal. And that man sitting there. And he can't look at his wife and say, that's enough. That's a weak knee brother. Because he's supposed to rule his own house. And you know how, how deep that is. This is what God said about a man ruling his house. God said, husbands, it's got authority over his wife like Jesus got authority over the church. Now, you ever see the church telling Jesus what to do? Ain't that something? Wives, you have got a powerful position. And that's why I always preach all the time in Lake City on sheep and goats. Sheep and goats. Either you're a sheep or you're a goat, but you are not both. God said he's coming back to separate the sheep from the goats. See, the sheep can be led. A goat, you can't lead a goat. Everything the word of God said, a goat or buck against it. And that's how sometimes husbands are goats. That's how sometimes wives are goats. They want to have it their own way. But if you can follow this Jesus that wrote this book, that the author and the finish of this book, you got to be a sheep. Now you might be a goat, and you might be in the skies, but Jesus coming back to separate us. He says that like a shepherd separated sheep, one from another. And whatever you are on this day, you might have been getting away with it for years, but when the judge comes, you won't be getting away with it. Is that all right? And brother, when God wants us to carry his laws into our homes and teach our children and teach our wives what's right, we will take account of all the things we've done in our body, whether it be good, whether it be bad. That's why the Bible says the eyes of God is in every place, beholding the good and the bad. He is in our home. He's in our community. He's in our conversations. He's in it how you treat your husband, how you treat your wife. That's why the Bible says eyes are everything in our homes. How you talk to your husband, how you talk to your wife in the home. You will take a kind of one day. I'm going to take a kind of one day. It's a two-edged sword. Is that all right? 
Some folks think about it. Y'all mighty quiet. Amen. In the book of Ruth, look at Ruth 4 and verse number 5. I want to show you something for me. It's a relatively good scripture, but I want you to take a look at it. Ruth chapter 4 and verse number 13. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people. I got that's the wrong scripture, verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bore what? Son. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his what? Wife. The man took the woman. And the Bible says, and she, he accepted her to be his wife. See, when a woman marry a man, sisters, you got to know your role. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You can't be a she, he. You got to be a she or a he, but you can't be both. In the home, you to be male and female married. And when they get married, they're supposed to leave and cleave to each other. And that's wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in one another. That's the man and his wife. It's not all right. Men and women, everything get between them. Letting it, the, the girlfriend, mom and daddy get between them. Let the boyfriend or husband, mom and daddy get between them. That's what God means, leave and cleave. A mother and a father should, uh, a, a, a man or woman should leave mother and father. And that means go to your own house where you can be the head. When you see men in mother and father house, is something going wrong. That's a house with more than one head. A man is supposed to be in his own house, paying his own bills, taking care of his own wife and his own children. Is that all right? So think about it. How God got this thing set up. The Bible teaches about the husband. Look at Ephesians 5 and verse 25. Let's go over there real quick if you don't mind. Ephesians 5 and verse 25 if you don't mind. The book of Ephesians. Chapter 5 and verse 25. Are we over there? Watch verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Ain't that something? All God said, husbands, love your wife. Wives. How many of you love your wife today? I mean, love her. A godly love. Love her in spite of her. Love her when she do good. Love her when she do bad. Love her when you're fussing. Love her when you're fighting. Love her. Do you know what love is? Do you know how to love a woman? Have you looked up the word love in the Bible and find out what it means? So then you can display it when it comes to your wife. Do you really love your wife? Often tell me, uh, people, when a man loves a woman, whatever it takes to keep her, he'll do it. Whatever it takes to please her, he'll do it. Not if it goes against God's word, but loving him like you should love her. Loving the, 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 the woman like Jesus loved the church. Now, no matter what we do, Jesus don't get rid of us. We do some terrible things to God. We commit adultery, we commit fornication, we lie, we steal, we gamble, we do all kinds of things to God. God don't get rid of us. All we got to do is repeat, come back home, God and accept us back. But what some of us do, just put our minds away from any power. Now, see, can you handle this show? I'm getting ready to tell you. And then lie about it. Lie about it. You lie about it. But God already know. What happened in the home, you the two people know. Well, three. A husband and wife and God always draw a triangle. Know exactly what happened in that marriage. And though you might have fooled the elders, and though you might have fooled the preacher, 
And though you might have come to me, boy, you ain't from God. If you didn't get your divorce for that right reason, you got some hate trouble. I won't be apologizing for the stuff I'm preaching today. So don't come and ask me. <laughs> I done told you. It's right. And then lie about it. And then come get a preacher to elder some complimentary excuse. What happened in your marriage when you already know how you're supposed to be loving your wife? You know how you're supposed to love her. And if you love her that way, y'all can work it out. Sometime in the home, you got to give up your rights. That good might come. You might be dead right sometime. But in the home with a marriage, sometimes you got to give up your rights. Master and gender. They can take some things. The Bible talks about the woman by the side. The weaker vessel. Sometimes she might can't have it. But you're a man. You were made in the image of God. And you can take some role. Is that all right? You got to be right all the time. Nobody right all the time. Sometimes you need to suffer home, suffer, suffer, suffer wrong sometimes to keep that marriage together. Don't be looking at me like that. God tell me not to be scared of your eyes, y'all face. God tell me, I'm going to look right back. <laughs> Pray for me, bro, Sam. <laughs> Is that all right? Look at verse 27, chapter 25, verse 27. Look at verse 27. That he might present it unto himself a glorious church, not have a spot or rake or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So the men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth him more. So, that's pretty deep, Danny. That's pretty deep, Danny. Do you love yourself? Do you love yourself? But you should love your wife like you love yourself. Boy, I know how I love me. Let's talk, tell the truth and stay in the church. This I know how I love me. And if I can love Janice like I love me, now that's some good loving. <laughs> if I don't love, boy, I love me. <laughs> I ain't selfish, brother God. But boy, I love me. Y'all I love me. And if I love Janice like I love me, I can put up with some stuff. I can really understand a better person. If I love her like I love me. I can understand that. I can humble myself. Sometimes I can even go in the room and say I can cry. Because I won't fly away and she won't get to me. She's going to stay. Stay where she is. Sometimes in my home, I'm trying to tell y'all, sometimes in my home, Jack be right more than me. <laughs> and I'll be fussing and she doesn't show me I'm wrong and I got that old pride. Pride go before the fall. Just for you bust hell open, that pride will go. Did y'all remember that rich man? Had all that pride, he didn't want the poor man to eat from his table. But when he got in that fire, the pride left. <laughs> Tell Lazarus to go dip his finger in some water and come soothe my tongue. The pride gone. You might have pride now and leave your wife for another cause than for fornication or adultery. But one day you wish you ain't did God long will stand. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. See, the home is a powerful institution that was set up by God. God don't want our marriages to be tear apart. God wants us to stay with our wives and work it out and raise up our children to stay with their wives and be an example for the future, the future church, for children that are coming up behind us, that they can look at our marriage and know that you love your wife and can meet somebody and say, I want a, 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 a wife like mom. I want a, 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 a husband like daddy. Because you have set such a good example in your homes. Ain't that something? Some of us think about it. Husbands is to be the head of the wife. Look at Ephesians 5 and verse 23. Ephesians 5 and verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the world body. A lot of preachers can go to hell for that scripture. I mean that. They play with that scripture. They try to fix that scripture up and make it seem that, 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 that the head of the church and the head of the wife, that 
a husband and a wife that's on equal basis in the home, not so. Not long as they use that, 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 that word head. I'm sorry. I treat my wife so good, she thinks she's a head. <laughs> but I always teach her that she's not. You understand what I'm saying? When you treat your wife and love your wife like the law of love the church, she will always feel like, hey, I got power in this house. My husband loves me. My husband will give it to me my way. It's like my wife, boy, if, if, if I'm lost, it's probably because of her. So I'll be about to kill somebody with her. Like it ain't nothing. I mean this. Man, love is a deep thing. Love is something that, 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 that supersedes a lot of other things in our, in our body. Love. That's the only thing I find in the Bible, brother, say, never fail. Love never fail. Love is long-suffering. Love is not puffed up. Fed is not itself. Love is, watch the shit now, not easily provoked. Love don't see its own. Don't got to be right. Love is a powerful word. And when I use it, love is what love does. So when I say I love James, that means I'm long-suffering with her. Patient with her. Y'all understand this? I know how to treat her. Love is what love does. Love don't see his own. You know, I know I'm right, but I don't need no trophy at the hold of my hand with, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. That's how love works. Love is a powerful thing. Now, the truth can stand in the way. You can't do nothing with the truth. But you can handle the truth wrong and do more damage than you do good. Believe it or not. This gospel we got is a two-edged sword. And when we don't use it the right way in our home, we could do more damage than we do good. Me and my wife had much Bible study when I obeyed the gospel. I got with my preacher brother come in. We study, study, study. And Janice knew what marriage was. I knew what marriage was. And, 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 and I used to ask, can you handle what the Bible says? She would say, can you handle what the Bible says? Because there's some powerful scriptures for the husband and there's some powerful scriptures for the wife. And the husband and the wife need to be united in the home. When the children coming up, they can't put the wife against the husband or the husband against the wife. If they can't get their way with the father, they're going to run into the mother. If they can't get their way with the mother, they're going to run into the father. That's not how it should be. A mother and father should be on one accord in that home. Is that all right? That's something for the think about, ain't it? Husband is the head. Husband is the cleave to his wife. Look at Genesis 2 and verse 24. I want us to look at that again. We're getting ready to come on back up. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one what? Flesh. Have you leave and cleave to your wife? I got a good question for you. Oh, that's us married people this morning. Is your marriage getting worse or it's getting better? Tell the truth in your mind. Tell the truth to the Lord. If your marriage getting worse, are your marriage getting better? And when it gets bad, do you get the Bible and show your wife what God expects of you? And your husband stop moving away from you. Do you open your Bible and show your husband what God expects of him? When y'all start having problems and pulling apart and not loving each other like you should, do you go to a, 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 a get some marriage counseling? What's up with that thing y'all said for marriage counseling? You know? Marriage counseling. Uh, marriage seminar. Do you go to a marriage seminar? Me and my wife went to a marriage seminar. We went over to the marriage seminar. Man, you wouldn't believe how that did me, Janice. You wouldn't believe it. A while back, um, Brother Sapp came to, I believe, Lake City, and he preached a lesson. I believe Lake City called Marriage Busters. 
They ain't got to bust up a home. Or have things they need to this day. You never know when you preach something and you teach something, how that seed is going to go into that man and make him a better man. Or you can sit there and let your marriage get worse and worse in the Lord. You need to go some time and sit down and just talk to your elders or talk to your deacons. And just talk to them about your marriage and what's going on. And, 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 and if they man of God, when you talk to them, they shouldn't leave that room. But don't let your house be a folk knox with nothing going and nothing go out and you can't get no help. Marriage is worth preserving and working out and fixing and building up at certain times. No marriage is perfect, but it'll work if you work it. Now understand what people say to you now. You understand? Don't never take your wife for granted. Never take her for granted. Don't do that. Never take your husband for granted because he's a good man and you know he ain't going nowhere and he's a member of the Lord's church. Don't take your husband for granted. Love your husband. Ain't that something? I've been laughing when you give me this topic, Brother Sam. I said, oh boy. You know, you, you, I got that old boy for you too. <laughs> 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 well, you'd be surprised what I look up from you. <laughs> but I'm trying to share something with y'all today. That marriage is honor. And you know, after you stand up, you. What grade you in? Yeah, you, stand up. What grade you in? You a sophomore in what? Now, nah, he's getting ready to think about it. Why? I know your mom and daddy said, not nah, check. Wait some more time. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> and then, and if it's, 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 if it's right, then you know that God said, if a man can't contain himself, get himself a what? Watch. Stay a virgin. I know they're coming at you now. You're looking mighty good, boy. Stay a virgin. Stay a virgin. Wait, wait, wait. They're going to be, boy, them women don't stand for nothing now. You got to stand for something. So my point to you today is to take your time and listen at the women. You know, never see. My mama told me when I got married, my mama said, go out there to her mom and daddy house. Meet her mom and daddy. Find out what's going on. Find out if they clean people. Do they cook? Is they family already? Find out her background. You know? And the next thing I know, Jack was finding out my background. I said, don't do that because you won't marry me. <laughs> my family is the Hatfield McCall. <laughs> But when I went out there to meet her mother and meet her father, man, I found some good old country people, some cooking people, some clean people. And I met them, man, and I, I said, oh my God, look how this girl been raised. Her mom and dad, they was in denominationalism, but they were good, clean people. And Janice came to meet her in Bible study, and man, I had to put her to the law. Sometimes you get somebody that's not Christian, and the first thing you know, teach them, and then she don't get the gospel at the church. And let me share something with you sometime. Life takes a lot of turns you ain't even looking for. But you got to prepare for those turns. You understand what I'm saying? Anytime you meet somebody and you lack a little girl, first thing you do, teach her the gospel. Bring her to the church. Don't start all that old, old rap. Don't stop listening to them old songs. Barry White and all them guys and good little women rapping. You teach them the gospel. And see where they stand with the gospel and how they receive God. And if they receive God well, I don't know if that's the best stuff, but that's what I did with my mom. <laughs> I brought her to the church. She started having Bible study. I was having Bible study. I was a new convert. We grew up in the church. And man, me and Janice, our marriage is getting better. We have our times. We have our times. But man, our marriage is getting better and better. I love her more and more. And boy, let me tell you something. She's looking good today. <laughs> and they show y'all brother something so y'all won't make no mistake. You know, right <laughs> here. And I love her. So when y'all run up on her and get a knock side of y'all head, I done tell you. That's mine. <laughs> Boy, I believe everybody think I'm so serious. <laughs> but what Brother Fulton is saying to you today, brothers, love your wives, own your wives, cherish your wives, treat them good. Treat them like you know they deserve to be treated. I'm going on with them. Let's have one more time I got. I'm about through. 
Uh, boy, this shit getting good and good, bro, sir. Yeah. Uh, let me see where I want to go to. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Brother Ron, you still got your reading boss. Would you read that for me, please, sir? Chapter 3, verse 7. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. And, and you know, you know, Brother Ron, a lot of times a preacher just hurt curl scriptures out of his mouth. But it's got more power when you go back and you show people where it's written. You see what I'm saying? Just like I said, a woman was the weaker vessel. Yeah, a lot of y'all don't know that that in the Bible or not. But it's in there. It's in there. And, 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 and you gotta realize sometimes that a, a wife is not a man. She's a woman. And we need to treat her like a woman. Now, women are strong. Don't misunderstand me. Women are strong. That's not what I'm saying. But God calls a woman the weaker vessel. And if anybody know that, God know that. It's not all right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is sometimes you've got to be long-suffering. you got to be patient. You understand? You can't be sick of your own all the time. Because sometimes you and your wife will be having words about something and, and tearing her up inside. And you've got to realize she's the weaker what? Vessel. It might be some time over the kids. And 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 and, and um, as the husband, brother Sam, you might say, great, this is the way it's gonna be. And the wife say, well, you're right, baby, but let's be a little patient with this. The wife, a, a mother, something else. Man, let me tell you something, man. I don't have got a hook on crap. I don't have you gave an alcohol and out in the streets doing all kinds of ungodly things. Uh, uh, and my mother still loved me. Still was long suffering with me. And when I got out of prison, I called my mom and she said, she done had put me out the house for my mess. But when I got out of prison, I called, I said, Mama, can I come home? She said, come on in here, baby. And, 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 and that's that woman emotions. A woman is an emotional creature. Matter of fact, Brother Joey talking. <laughs> Joey said, they're everything emotion, emotion, emotion. So a woman is an emotional creature. And we got to realize the treatment such and be long suffering. And when it comes down to your marriage, I want to give some good advice to you, brother. Be slow to speak. You go home, think you're going to get some undercover thunder, and you can say two or three words to a wife, and she'll be turned off. And when you say it, it ain't really mean nothing to you, but it cut her to the heart. Because she a woman. So be careful how you speak and talk to your wife. Think about before you talk to your wife what those words are going to do when they utter. Uh, the reason I'm telling y'all this is because I mess up all the time. <laughs> I'm always saying something I shouldn't say. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling, I'm telling you the truth, excuse me, bro. I'm telling you the truth. I'm always saying something I shouldn't have said. And, 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 and sometimes you can be dead right. But the way you say it, I'll turn your wife off. Just because who she is, a woman. And that's why we got to realize God tell a man to love his wife, God did it you. But then I want you to love her like I love the church. Why not? Tell me that won't keep a hold of us. We love our wives like Jesus loved the woman. Man, Jesus said, if I had a hundred sheep and one go to scrape, Jesus said, I'll leave 99 to go find my lost sheep. Ain't that something? How we should feel about our wives. No matter what going on in our marriages, as the head of the house, we should, it should be our ultimate goal to keep our marriage together. Amen. We stay with our wives. We work out. And if you see when you and your wife can't work it out, get some good counsel. Man, one time I went to a church, I got my first preaching job. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to close down, brother Seth. I got my first preaching job. Man, when I went to this preaching job, it was a, a woman and a bunch of her children. 
And, and her husband was a preacher, just sitting down in the church. And I come there and that woman stopped dragging that preacher through the mud. And the children dragging him through the mud. All I heard is, is, is bad things about this, this man. And, and it's a true story. And, 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 and man, I sit him down and, and I talk to him hard. And say, you need to treat your wife better. He keeps saying, Fulton, you don't know. You don't know, Brother Fulton. You don't know. I know what they're telling me. <laughs> so, one of the other old preachers, three preachers there, but Brother Ellaby, he was another older man. And Brother Ellaby said, Brother Fulton, you might need to get some help. Somebody to come in here and, and hear both sides. So I called Brother Sapp. And Brother Sapp came over to Mullins, my first preaching job. You know, just got out of preaching school, think I know everything, ain't know nothing. And, and I went over there and I called Brother Sapp, and Brother Sapp come, and Brother Sapp got the man and his wife together, and Brother Sapp said, when your husband talk to you, you can't say nothing. Brother Sapp said, when the wife talk to you, you can't say nothing. And that man stopped talking, and that woman stopped crying. And finally, Brother Sapp looked over there and I said, is he telling the truth? And she started hollering. Yeah, he telling the truth. That woman used to cook and wash the dishes and feed the children. And she was so mean, she ain't even say no food for her. When he got home, he said, well, all y'all need to come and pay out the dinner. And the children said, uh, Daddy, Mama not cook. That's how mean this woman was. But I'm thinking everything she telling me, her and the children was right. They were true. When Brother Sapp came there, we got the whole truth. And let me share something with you about getting the whole truth on a marriage. One of these days, God will get the whole truth on our marriages. How we treat our wife, how we treat our husband, how we raise our children. Whether you was a good head or a bad head, whether you was honorable in your home, whether you treat your wife like Jesus treat the church. Whether you raise your children up in the way that they go. One of these days you're going to take account of, 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 of your headship in your home. You're going to take account of that one day. And that's why I'm sharing with you sometime that, 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 that sometime you need to get help to keep these marriages together. Don't tell these marriages up. Don't tear it up. Work it out. Don't get fed up. Get help. Because the word of God is a powerful book. And it, everything containing unto life and godliness. So I want to tell the man this morning, rise up in your own and take your place. And be a masculine gender. God made man in his image and his likeness. Be what we are. Carry yourself. As the head of your house. Love your wife. Love your children. Love the church. Love the Lord. Love his word. Men be all things that you need to be in order to keep your home together. That the thought in the home, that God will rule in your house. Me and dads talk all the time. And um, as we talk, a lot of times I realize that, you know, when God made woman, he sure did something good. When he made man, God showed did something good. Don't let what God has done in our homes be in vain. Stand up and do that. Wives, be subject to your husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wife like Jesus loved the church. Children, obey your parents in all things. But it is right. And I turn the service over to the hands of the Lord. When you walk with the Lord in the light of